Hallelujah. Let's all just start worshiping our God this morning. He's our victorious God. And when our God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He is a God who has conquered it all. And through him, we have conquered it all too. Amen. He's always fighting for us and he's never given up on us. And he's always in control, even, if, even though things around us may not seem as though it's going good. But then he's still in control of it all. Amen. Let's all just sing it out. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. There's no other name that's worthy of our praise. There's no other name that could stand against the name of Jesus. Just a touch of your word, just a touch from you, Father, will change our things. Just a mention of your name, things are changing around us. Amen. Oh, you change us. You are always fighting for us. Heaven's angels are on our side. My delight is in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. Yeah. And hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. you have overcome the world lift it up hallelujah hallelujah oh you have overcome yeah you have overcome you have overcome hallelujah jesus you have overcome the world. Sing out the first verse. You are always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is in the knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. Oh, hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome the Stronghold shall be broken. You wear the weakness. You will overcome. You will overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the fixes. You will overcome. Oh, you will overcome. Every high thing. Oh, you will overcome. And hallelujah. Your name, demons flee 
at the mention of your name Chains break at the mention of your name Our situations are changing oh, We sing Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus Silence, fear, oh Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name could not be overcome. the light forever lifted high your name could not be overcome we sing jesus oh jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus jesus the silence fear oh your name oh god jesus oh you silence fear oh there's power in the name of jesus there's victory in your name there's victory in the blood of jesus oh break every chain we declare it in the name of jesus every bondage every sickness we break it in the name of Jesus, yeah. There is power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, 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 there's an army, there's an army rising up. Army rising up. Oh, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, see that I see the chains falling. Oh, I see, I see, oh, 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 o
I see the chains falling in the name of Jesus, yeah. I see the chains falling. Oh, I see the chains falling. If you believe it, just declare it. I see, I see the chains falling. Oh, I see the chains falling. power there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power yeah 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 to break every chain yeah 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 break every chain break every chain there's nothing that you can break in our lives Break every chain, 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 every chain, yeah, yeah, break every chain. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time of worship. We thank you for uh, going before us and setting the path straight. And we thank you that you are fighting our battles, Father. And then you are with us all the step of the way and every single step that we take. And we want to pray that same prayer that Moses prayed. If you don't go before us, we are not moving forward, Father. Because everything that we do, every single effort that we take, if, if you don't go before us, we are bound to lose it, Father. Help us to glorify your name in every single thing that we do. And even as we listen to your word, we pray that it will speak to each and every one of us. And we believe that we are more than conquerors because you have conquered it all for us, Father. And at the mention of your name, demons flee. At the mention of your name, chains break. And whatever is going on around, we declare and we believe that you are above it all. And you are breaking it all. And you are setting the path straight for us, Father. We need not struggle because you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. What a wonderful God we have. Our God is with us. He is Emmanuel. He leads us. He guides us. Yes, He keeps us. And let us continually stay in an attitude of prayer even as I share God's word with you. And this is the word from God for you. My brother, my sister, I just want you to pay attention as I share God's word. Stay fully focused so that you will receive the blessing that God has plan for you in a full measure yes thank you lord shall we close our eyes and look to god so that we will be able to receive god's word into our hearts into our mind into our lives may i encourage all of you if you're able to kneel down just kneel down just for one minute yes one or two minutes yes raise your hands and pray lord we need you yes lord without you we can do nothing. What a wonderful promise you have given us that we can do all things. But oh God in this earth, in this world, without you we can do nothing. Lord we thank you for your word that makes us to live. We live by faith. We live by your word. And we pray that your word will enter into our hearts, especially, Lord, during these days, into every one of your children's hearts, wherever they are. As they listen to your word, Lord, I pray you will minister to them, speak to them, Lord. I come against all the powers of darkness, trying to distract the minds of God's people from receiving God's word. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
let your anointing flow holy spirit of god help us to understand your word and help us to obey your word help us lord to be doers of your word lord thank you lord jesus lord i also pray that you will continue to keep your children in good health and strength every one of them lord keep them away from all the evil keep them away from the spreading virus speak up uh, keep them away from every diseases lord i pray that you will prepare our church for your coming lord yes lord even in the next few minutes as i as we listen to your word minister to us in jesus name we pray amen amen <clears throat> God has given us this amazing promise word I hope and I wish uh, many of you have already by hearted uh, this beautiful promise word I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me yes we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us I explained to you from the beginning of this month what does it mean what does it mean to say all things it's not just all things it is things that god wants you to do things that god has planned for you to do things that you need to do yes and from the beginning of this month we have studied uh, to some extent we have studied about christ who strengthens us i hope you remember today i'm going to speak to you in the next few minutes about the first part of this promise word where we see i can do i can do as i already mentioned this is not a statement of self confidence this is in fact about god confidence it's not about you know something that i can do with my own strength no through christ who strengthens me that tells me that uh, my dependency is on god and it is a god dependent statement i say i can do because my god can do and the god who is in me is all powerful and nothing is impossible with them what is impossible with man is possible with god and therefore i say i can do all things because we have such powerful god who strengthens us in the area of our weaknesses whether it is our personal life whether it is our, our family life whether it is our job related work related thing or whether it is related to your social life or the church related thing or the ministries that you need to do for the glory of god for the extension of god's kingdom god strengthens us last week i spoke to you about four kinds of people the fact is all of us will fall into the first category where uh, moses said i cannot do sometime or other in at some situation we face some problem that goes beyond our control sometimes we face some challenges that looks like too difficult to handle we feel all of us we feel i cannot do so many people we have heard even great people you know highly educated people highly talented people and uh, famous people committed suicide one of the reason is they felt that they cannot live anymore but this morning as i share god's word with you my brother my sister our god who strengthens us is with us and he will enable us to say that i can even when you even if you are with a mindset that i cannot god will enable you to change your mindset to i can this is my prayer and this is my desire that in the next few minutes as i share god's word with you i would like you to pay attention to god's word and receive these words because these are the words of god that will help you that will enable you to change your mindset in case if you are in an attitude of i cannot all of us at some point of time we will go through some problems some difficulties some challenges because jesus said in this world you will have tribulation Yes suffering is part of our christian life carrying the cross and following christ is part of our spiritual life struggles pain trouble shame all these things will come but when you go through some tribulation some trial some temptation some suffering some struggle some pain or some troubles don't feel that you cannot don't get discouraged don't get depressed by seeing those things 
Don't ever say that I cannot. Learn to say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Someone said if you go through hell don't stop. You know what does it mean? When you go through some hell like situation. You know you feel like you are in hell. Don't get settled. Don't stop. Don't say that I can't and don't simply keep quiet. Rather stand up and say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and move forward. Last month I hope you remember the whole month I talked to you about uh, life in Christ and the blessings in Christ the authority we have in Christ and about even growing in Christ and while talking about our growth in Christ I I remember I told you about don't be childish you can have a childlike heart but you cannot you should not you and I should not be childish one of the things about being childish is falling down but not getting up let me explain it to you have you seen little children when they are one year old or one year or maybe one year one month they start walking when they start walking they take one or two steps and then they fall down and uh, immediately parents one of the parents or somebody who is around they come and uh, lift the baby up but the same baby after he or she grown up when he or she falls down if he or she still remains on the floor looking for somebody to come somebody will shout and say hey get up shake off the dust and get up now some of you you have been in the lord for a long time if you are a new believer if you are a child in christ i understand but at the same time some of you you have been in christ you have been knowing and following christ for quite some time but uh, now you are for some reason if you feel that you have fallen down you need to shake off the dust and you need to get up you need to arise some of you who are listening to me you have fallen into some sin knowingly or unknowingly you yielded to some temptation that you faced in the past months today i challenge you my brother my sister shake off that dust and you can rise up from that sin through christ who strengthens you you can some of you you may tell that you have been falling down many times getting up falling down again in the same sin again and again you may tell me pastor i have fallen down seven times i tell you the eighth time you get up you arise and say i can stand firm through Christ who strengthens me some of you you find it too difficult to say no to some temptation because it looks so attractive to you my brother today as you receive this promise word i want to challenge you you can say no and overcome that temptation through Christ who strengthens you some of you you find it too difficult to pray for one hour one hour prayer it looks like climbing mountain for you you know yes it is true with our own strength we all can pray only for 5 to 10 minutes but when with the strength of god you can pray for us to gather through christ who strengthens you some of you go through some spiritual warfare even today or in the past month or past weeks or once in a while or often you face some spiritual battle you are not able to sleep in the night uh, and there are uh, conflict in the family you know uh, uh, unnecessary conflicts uh, and there are some uh, uh, and disturbance in your family there are some disturbance in your life you do not have peace inner peace uh, and you know it's a spiritual battle i want to tell you my brother my sister you can overcome that evil spirit that is battling with you you can overcome that evil spirit through christ who strengthens you amen some of you you have a desire even have some plans uh, to do something for god for the extension of his kingdom in the ministry but you feel that you you are so weak you feel that you don't have strength you feel that you cannot do but today i tell you as we have received this amazing promise you can do that ministry through christ who strengthens you some of you feel that 
you are not able to overcome some weakness you feel so weak because of some nature you know some some uh, some of your own nature old nature some anger or you are not able to overcome that weakness you know you should not but you know unnecessarily and too much of anger too much of fear or some pride or some laziness or some selfishness or something you know it looks you you want to overcome that you know it is your weakness but it looks like a mountain for you i tell you it is not a big sin of course you know that is why sometimes even you you ignore it somebody said uh, you know it is in tamil it is not pavam but subhavam you know it is not pavam but subhavam and uh, it, it may be like that but whatever you go through today i want to challenge you whether it is pavam or subhavam you can overcome it and god will strengthen you in the area of your weakness and you can say that you, i can do all things through christ who strengthens me having told you all these things the different areas or the different things uh, that you can say that you can do i feel the list goes on and on what all you can do through christ who strengthens you the summary is you need to let god enable you so that you can change your mindset from i can't to i can in the past or until now you might have said to god i can't but from now on my brother my sister i want to challenge you N stop saying i can't to god stop saying when it comes to spiritual things you know last week i was reading luke chapter 14 after reading luke chapter 14 i feel all of us you and i we should never say i cannot when it comes to things related to god or our spiritual things In Luke chapter 14 verses 15 to 24 Jesus told a parable about a banquet a great man he prepared a a, ban a banquet and invited many guests at that time of banquet he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited come everything is ready but they all started making excuses each of them said i cannot come i cannot come i cannot come and uh, they all said excuses the master of the house he got angry he became angry and ordered his servants go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor the crippled and the lame and the blind he said not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet though each of them made different excuses one of that fellow straight away said i cannot come in verse 20 listen to the reading of this word still another said i have married a wife and therefore i cannot come when that fellow said i cannot the master did not try to convince him please listen to me very carefully Of course Jesus originally told this parable to the Jews talking about the Jews who rejected Jesus they did not they said they cannot come to Jesus they failed to receive Jesus however there is a message for all of us especially during these days my brother my sister i urge you don't say i cannot to god Don't expect God to come after you. Don't ex don't think that God will come after you to convince you. Don't wait for somebody to come and uh, convince you. No, it will not happen again. You stop saying I cannot when it comes to God's things. How to change our mindset from I cannot to I can. In the next few minutes I will talk to you about three things. These these three things uh, that I learned personally from god and from other men of god and also from the scripture i believe these three things that i'm going to share with you are very important for you please note down number 1 what do we need to do how can we change our mindset from i cannot to i can number 1 rest in the lord and wait patiently for god rest in the lord in other words don't be in a hurry Many a times uh, 
when we go through some tough situation, we get tensed and immediately, without even thinking, we say, I cannot. I've heard about people, they resign their job just because of silly problems, some small problem that they face. In every job, in every company, people face conflicts. But when they face some conflict, they say, I cannot, and they resign the job and come. How many families, they give up in their relationship by saying that I, they cannot live as a family anymore and uh, all in a hurry. I want to challenge you, my brother, my sister, whatever may be the problem that you're going through, relax, take time, wait patiently in the Lord. Some people, they, they go through some extreme situation and uh, they, they say that I cannot live anymore and they try to commit suicide. No, you don't need to. Jesus is alive, you don't need to die. Some people when they face some problem in their job or in their workplace without even, uh, even trying to uh, solve the problem, without even trying to find a resolution for the problem, they quit the job saying I cannot do, do this job anymore. Every family will have some problem or other. But some people when they face some conflict in their family, suddenly they say I can't manage this conflict and they take wrong decisions when people take advantage of you my brother when they try to do things against you when when you feel that uh, things are going out of control don't panic don't get tensed next time when you face such situation the first thing i want you to do the first thing is relax take some time to rest in the lord that's what it says psalm 37 Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Recently, I learned a lesson for myself. It was something that was so thrilling to learn. The lesson is, work from rest, not rest from work. Did you listen? Work from rest, not rest from work. I know I'm going little off track from my message but still I feel that I should share this with you this important lesson with you it may be useful to some of you this lesson I learned is from creation till Jesus time you know, from the creation we see God created everything on the sixth day he created man and he blessed him be fruitful and multiply listen and uh, now man has to start working and uh, when man has to start working the first thing was rest on the seventh day rest and then only work so work from rest rest comes first usually it is on the other way right we work and work and work when we get tired we take rest I'm not only talking about physical rest, I'm talking about the spiritual rest also. Rest in the Lord does not mean that sleeping. Rest in the Lord is not, uh, you know, uh, just simply uh, 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 being lazy. Rest in the Lord is taking our rest in the presence of God. You know, when God created everything, He gave work to man, but it was from rest. Work from rest, not rest from work. And about Jesus, we see, before he started doing his public ministry, he was resting in the Lord. 40 days, fasting, spending time with the Father. That's how he began work from rest. Even about the disciples of Jesus Christ. When Jesus uh, uh, selected his disciples, he told them, the first thing was to be with them. In Mark chapter 3, we see, you know, God selected, Jesus selected them, and then he not immediately sent them to do uh, their ministry. He asked them to be with them. That is resting in the Lord. And then only God's, Jesus sent them to, to preach the gospel or to do ministry to heal the sick. Even look at the early disciples. After the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the disciples of Jesus, they did not go immediately and start doing ministry. They started the work from rest. They were waiting. And when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, when they got strengthened, it was only then they started doing ministry. No wonder, no wonder you know, when they did ministry, supernatural things happened. And people could see Jesus in their ministry. I believe 
these days god has given us amazing days and let us find rest in the lord don't be lazy don't be found always sleeping but take time to be in the presence of god what does it mean to say rest in the lord or resting in the lord let me explain it to you in the last few months by the grace of god god has brought in so many new people a good number of new people have come into our church and god is doing amazing things in our church one of the new person his name is srijit he's a college student and he's been coming to our church for the past uh, one and a half months and uh, as soon as he started coming to church uh, he also joined with us in the morning prayer through conference call every day he joined with us in the conference call morning prayer and uh, one day he asked me two weeks ago he asked me pastor would you teach me how can i pray for one hour i was so happy to hear such a question from a new person i sat with him i i told i told him i taught him few things from my experience uh, and later in the morning prayer <clears throat> when he joined you know to all the people i i taught them how can they pray for one hour and this is a lesson from which i learned from my early days and uh, somebody taught me a great man of god taught me the six hours the english letter r the six hours that we can follow in our daily personal prayer the six things that we can do in prayer number 1 relax two read three reflect four record five request six rely the first and the last thing please listen relax and rely on the lord and sometimes you know many times people when they come to prayer they come with lot of tensions worries and they just you know pray in a hurry bury no relax few months ago my mummy was serious i think it was on the 1st of july and uh, my brother called me and said start immediately in those days without e pass we can't travel and uh, i was looking into the internet trying to find how i can get the e pass and uh, somebody said it will take 3 days and then i thought i should get the e pass immediately i went to the whitefield railway station i parked my car maybe 200 meters away from the railway station because there was no parking in front of the whitefield railway station area i parked my car and uh, you know i heard my mummy is serious so i came literally running from the place where i parked my car to the police station and i said i need to meet the inspector and uh, for this purpose and they said he is in the first floor i ran climbing up the uh, staircase i went into the inspector's office i was you know like this i was fully tensed and i said sir my mummy is sick i need an e pass would you please and he said go and sit down on the sofa he showed me a sofa and he asked me to sit down there come after 5 minutes once you relaxed once you are relaxed you come i was thinking isn't it true sometimes when we are tensed when we go through some difficult situation we also come running to god and today i want to tell you relax cast all your cares upon jesus and don't take it again some people when they pray they carry heavy load and they come to the presence of god they lay their burden their worries their cares at the feet of the lord and after prayer once they say amen they gather all of them they put it in their pocket and they go no don't do that relax cast all your cares upon him and in the process of relaxing just sing songs praise him worship the lord that's how you know we can find our rest in the presence of god my dear brothers and sisters and then even at the end of the prayer rely on god that means uh, you continue to depend on him wait upon him you know don't be in a hurry don't be in a hurry bury attitude when you when you come to the presence of god rest in the lord and wait patiently in him this is what jesus is calling us for jesus said come to me i will give you rest we all know that scripture 
Resting in the Lord does not mean, as I said earlier, some people, they misunderstand. You know, especially during these days. You know, I am resting in the Lord and sleeping for 12 hours. No. I am resting in the Lord, simply sitting and doing nothing. No. Resting in the, in the Lord does not mean that being lazy or doing nothing. Resting in the Lord is letting God to do His work in us. And considering whether our life is in alignment with the word of God. In Psalm 105 verse 19 we see. Until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. These words are about Joseph when he was in the prison. Some of you, you may feel that you are in prison. You may feel that you are under home arrest. Don't look at it in a negative sense. Take advantage of these days. Let the word of God test you. It is the word of God that builds our faith uh, that, and, and that will enable us to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The more we get soaked in the word of God, the more we will be able to say, I can do. Do you know what happened in Joseph's life? Joseph was in the prison. The word of God uh, tested him. The word of God prepared him. And you know what happened in the next verse we see 105, Psalm 105 verse 20. The king sent and released Joseph. We know the remaining history. Joseph became the ruler of Egypt. And then in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Joseph told his brothers. This is something beautiful. And I believe this is something that is needed for some of you. In these days. Listen to the reading of God's word. In Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, Joseph said, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. I know we hear about a lot of evil that are going around us. But I want you to know in the midst of all these evils, sometimes some of you may be going through some evil situation. But I want you to know, God will turn that evil into good. All you need to do is rest in the Lord and look unto him. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. The second thing that I would like to share with you today is found in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 reads like this. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of the host. If you understand the background of this uh, particular scripture, this is about rebuilding the temple of God. The temple of God was destroyed by the uh, king of Babylon. But later in the days of Ezra and uh, others who are around him, they decided to rebuild the temple under the leadership of the man Zerubbabel. And we see in the history, you can read about it even in the book of Ezra, Zerubbabel laid the foundation for the temple of God. But you know what happened? There were heavy opposition and obstacles. As a result, they were not able to build the temple. They started building. 15 long years. For 15 long years, it looked as if they cannot. Even today, some of the ministries may look like that. My dear pastor friend, if any one of you are listening to me, I want you to know, God of Zerubbabel is our God. You can rebuild, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Now, we all know in the New Testament, when we talk about the temple of God, it's not about a building. It's about God's people. We all know we are the temple of the living God. God is not living in any building. God lives in us. And our lives are being built like a mansion as a temple of God. But in the process of building up of your life, 
In the process, there may be oppositions. There may be obstacles. Some of, some of us, we may face the enemy from within us. Our own self, our own selfish nature, our own old nature, they may rise against us. Sometimes we are not able to overcome it. Some of you may face some evil spirit, the spirit of the world, which are against you being built up for God. But I want you to know, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Some of you may have some things like unforgiveness or hatred or some bitterness. You are not able to overcome. For example, you are not able to forgive that particular person by your own strength, by your own power. It is impossible. But God says, by my spirit, it's not by my, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will enable you. And with that strength, you can forgive that person who hurt you. The next verse, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. It says, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Some of you are facing some great mountains, mountain-like obstacles, challenges. Some of you, you have some bad habit, you are addicted to it. You are not able to overcome it. Some of you have some personal issues that you can't even share it with anyone. It looks like a mountain because nobody is there to help you, to assist you. You can't, you can't even share it with anyone. It looks like a mountain. Some of you, you have some conflict, you have some uh, personal problem with somebody or some person who looks like a big mountain. Today, take hold of this promise. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you also can overcome that mountain. That mountain will become a plain. You can overcome that mountain by the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be able to say that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The third and the final thing, this is something very important for all of us during these days. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 we see, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. When you are in darkness, you are confused. You can't do anything. But when you walk in the light, you will be able to do and you will be able to say you can. And here, Apostle John is saying, if you walk in the light, you will have fellowship with one another. The third thing that I would like to tell you, which is very important uh, and uh, it is one of the most needed thing for all of us today is fellowship of the church. Fellowship of our brothers and sisters. As all of us are already aware of, church is not about the building. Church is not about the organization. Church is about God's family where you are connected. We as brothers and sisters, we are connected. And I as your spiritual father and you know, we are connected family. You know the greatness about it? In Psalms 133 verses 1 and 2 we see, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard. You know the oil is poured out extravagantly. It's like uh, you know extravagant uh, strength. By which you will be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is by the fellowship of the brothers and sisters. You and I may face some situation today. You may think that you can't. But my brother, my sister, you can. When you are part of the fellowship of your brothers and sisters. Some people, they keep their membership in the church only for Hatching, matching and dispatching. You know about it. You know when they have a child. They want the church uh, to recognize. They want the pastor to dedicate the child. And, and the, for the naming ceremony. And for matching. 
for their marriage and then for the dispatching, for the burial. But my brother, my sister, church is not just for hatching, matching and dispatching. Church is for you to overcome the challenges. Church is for you to grow. Church is for you to get strengthened. One of the lies of the devil, not, not just now, from the beginning of the church age. One of the lies of the devil is this. We do not need the church. Especially in these days now, everything is online. You know, you can listen to sermon online. You can pray online. You can, uh, you can even give your offerings online. Why do I need the church? My brother, my sister, that is the lie of the devil. Please don't believe the lie of the devil. You can have everything online, but uh, you need fellowship with real men and women, real brothers and sisters, real family of God. Yes, that is why we need this fellowship. Whether you believe it or not, accept it or not, all of us have our own weaknesses. You know, you may be strong in some area, but there may be some areas in your life you may not even realize, you may not even notice, you may have some areas of weaknesses. That is why we need one another. When the devil try to attack you, he will attack you in the area of your weaknesses. Especially in these days, we need one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to encourage one another. We need to build each other up. Talking about one another, building each other up and talking about the fellowship of our brothers and sisters. I like one particular scripture. Recently I was reading Acts chapter 14. This is quite interesting and also very much applicable to many of us. Even during these days, you may need it in the coming days. Please listen. In Acts chapter 14, we see Apostle Paul was in Lystra. There he was ministering and there was a great revival. Miracles, supernatural miracles happened. And all the people, they believed in Jesus. They not only believed in Jesus, they thought Paul and uh, his associate Barnabas, they were, the, they were gods. They were calling themselves Jupiter and Mercury. You know what happened? In verse 19 we see the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there having persuaded the multitudes they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city supposing his supposing him to be dead they thought Paul is dead now listen to verse 20 however when the disciples gathered around apostle Paul he rose up and went into the city Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes the devil may attack you to this level where you may even feel like you are dead. Spiritually or even physically. When you go through such situation, you need your brothers and sisters to stand around you, to pray for you, to strengthen you, to encourage you so that you will be able to arise and you will be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One thing I believe during these days, there is going to be a great revival post-COVID. That is going to be a great revival of the Holy Spirit and that is going to come through the church. And those who are part of the church, those who are along in with the brothers and sisters, they will be used mightily. Church is the preparation ground. Never forget that. Church is the preparation ground. And during these days, I, I strongly feel and I believe and I can always, already I can see God is preparing many of you to be used in the revival. Let me close my message today with the most important part of the promise word. The most important part of the promise word is through Christ. All these things you can do through Christ. You can be a soul winner. You can be a disciple maker. Not by your own strength, through Christ who strengthens you. You cannot separate Christ from the church. Please understand. Christ is the head of the church and church is the body of Christ. You cannot separate these two. I wonder, you know, sometimes people, they, 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 they talk against the church of God, church of Christ, the bride of Christ. I don't know how in the world they can talk like that. You cannot separate the church from Christ. 
And if you are in Christ, if you want the blessings in Christ, you need to be in the church. Because it is for the church, Jesus is coming. This Jesus is coming soon. You know, last month, the whole month, we studied about our life in Christ, the blessings in Christ, the authority we have in Christ, the, our growth in Christ. All these things happen in the church. Get ready. Get ready to receive the strength through Christ. Three things I told you. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number three, be found in the church, actively involving in the church. Shall we close our eyes and look to God in prayer? I encourage all of you, if you're able to kneel down, kneel down. Make a commitment. This is important time. My brother, my sister, you need to make a commitment before God, not before me. I'm not looking unto you. I'm not looking at you, whether you are doing it or not. If you believe and if you know that God has spoken to you, now it is time for you to respond to God for his word. Now respond to God. Make a decision. Next time when you face some difficult situation, next time when you feel that your problems are going beyond your control, next time when you face some challenges that is too difficult to handle, don't get tense, don't panic. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Would you surrender yourself to the Lord? Would you make a commitment? Yes, Lord. We will make use of these days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As I already mentioned, I strongly believe God has allowed all these things to happen. Nothing happens that happened today without his permission. Our God is above everything. If God has allowed all these things to happen, he has allowed all these things so that you will find rest in the Lord, in his presence. So that you will take time to enjoy his presence, to relax in his presence, to rely on him. Let us surrender ourselves to the Lord. Let us ask God, Lord, grant us your grace. Enable us, Lord, so that we will be able to rest in you and wait patiently for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful word from Zechariah. Not by might, not by power, but my spirit, says the Lord. That Holy Spirit is within you. And now all you need to do is take time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are already filled with the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues and pray in the Spirit. Others of you, ask God, whoever you may be, you may not know much about the Holy Spirit anointing, but still you can receive the Holy Spirit anointing, even from wherever you are. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues and pray in the Holy Spirit. The Lord is, is here to strengthen you. He will empower you. And hereafter you will not say, I cannot. God is changing your mindset. And you will be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In spite of all the challenges. Yes, 15 years have gone. But still, God said, Zerubbabel. By my spirit, it is going to happen. And you are going to build and complete the, the, the temple. In the same way, God is building you up. And he will enable you. He will strengthen you. And finally, shall we take a minute to thank God for the church. For the fellowship of our brothers and sisters. May I encourage every one of you, raise your hands. If you are not connected with all of us, get connected. Get connected with us. God has placed you in this church. God has given us his servants for your benefit, for your growth. Get connected. Don't stay disconnected. This is not safe in these days. You need to grow up. You need to achieve great things. You need to arise and you need to do things that God wants you to do. Raise your hands. And make a commitment to be faithful to the church where God has placed you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word that encouraging, that encourages us. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. May the words that we heard may continually and powerfully work in the hearts and minds of God's people. 
May them be blessed richly. May them receive the fullness of your promise. May them receive the fullness of your blessings. I bless them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Continue to lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Shall we all say together, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen. May the Lord continue to be with you and lead you victoriously. Amen.